Support the production of more videos by visiting the support move section on my website. The link is in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. So in this video, now that we've talked about atomic weight, I'd like to give a brief introduction to the mole and molar mass, even though we'll talk more about them a lot later. So what is the mole? The mole is the SI unit for amount, and we're typically talking about some substance, right? Now, one mole specifically is 6.022141 times 10 to the 23rd things. It's just a number, right? Just like one dozen equals 12 things. If you have a dozen eggs, you have 12 eggs. If you have one mole of eggs, you have 6.022141 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. That is an insane amount of eggs, okay? So writing it in scientific notation like this sometimes scares people. It kind of gets people confused about, like, that's just how many is that? Well, if you wrote it all the way out, it would look like this look like that. So about here would be the millions, right? Billions, trillions, and I don't even know what the what it would be out here, but the point is that it's a gigantic number, okay? It's actually um, Avogadro's number. Duke came up with it, and it's uh, Avogadro's number is abbreviated as N subscript A, okay? But why is this important? Why am I bringing it up now? Who cares, right? Well, one thing is important because it is the SI unit for amount. So, I mean, you sh we should be familiar with the SI units. Um, and we'll see it later in, in when we talk about stoichiometry. It's really, really important later. Um, but now, I'm bringing it up now because of its relationship to atomic weight of an element specifically. So, one mole of an element can be defined as the amount of an element whose mass in grams is equal to the atomic weight of that element and thus contains Avogadro's number of atoms. This is super important. Okay. Super important here. I can't make this cloud as neat as I'd like. <laughs> but that's a very important definition. Okay. And when you have this mass in grams of one mole of an element, it's called the molar mass. Represented by this sort of fancy looking M here. Molar mass we'll talk about more later again, like I said. Uh, and you can have the molar mass of compounds, in which case it would just be the sum of the atomic weights of the elements. But here we're talking about just a particular element. Molar mass is important as a conversion factor between amount and mass. Okay, so let's think about this with an example. Okay, if we have one mole of gold, okay, gold, one mole of gold, AU is the atomic symbol for gold. If we have one mole of gold, that is basically going to be equal to the atomic weight of that element, right? Which, if you look on a periodic table for gold, it will be 196.97 grams of gold, okay? So if you have one mole of gold, you have 196.97 grams of gold, vice versa. If you have 196 or 196.97 grams of gold, you have one mole of gold. Okay, And what you can do here is if you divide both sides, let's put this in a different color, if you divide both sides by one mole of gold, what you have is that is 196.97 grams of gold over one mole of gold equals one. Something equals one, it could be used as a conversion factor. Right, this value here that we've that we've basically made this 196.97 grams of gold per one mole of gold is the molar mass. This is the molar mass. Of course, the units here are grams per mole. Grams per mole. Okay. Also, one mole of gold is also going to contain 6.022, I've cut off a few sig figs here, times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold, or gold atoms. Right, So you can divide both sides by one mole here, um, or one mole of gold, and get a, a conversion factor as well. Okay, so, so we can do that here. Divide by one mole of gold, divide by one mole of gold, 
And then we have here another conversion factor if we want to convert between moles and number of atoms. So this is important as a conversion factor between amount and mass. So here, here we have mass and moles. Here we have number of atoms and moles. So we can go from grams to moles to atoms, or backwards, right? Oops. Okay, so the point is that it's useful as a conversion factor. Okay. So let's see this problem I have here. Okay. So how many gold atoms are in a 12.1 gram sample of gold? Okay. So we'll start off with the grams. So we'll have 12.1 grams of gold. And we want to convert this all the way over to atoms. The first thing that we need to get rid of is the grams, right? So we'll use the molar mass. 196.97 grams of gold has is, is one mole of gold, right? And then the grams of gold will cancel. Now I have moles, right? So if I multiply this all out, I would have moles of gold. But I don't want that. I want atoms. So I need to cancel these moles. So moles of gold are going to be on the bottom. Well, I know that one mole has this many atoms, right? Avogadro's number of atoms. So that'll cancel moles there. And then I'll have atom, uh, excuse me, gold atoms. So if I multiply all those top numbers, divide all the bottom numbers, I'll get, I'll have to have three sig figs according to what they started me with. I'll have 3.70 times 10 to the 22nd gold atoms. And that would be the answer there. Okay. So we used both of these here as conversion factors in getting this answer. Okay. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to hit it with a like and subscribe for more content. Also, follow Move University on the different social media links in the description below. Thanks and happy studying.